This month, the company Climeworks launched the world's largest facility to capture CO2 directly from the air and store it underground. It removes CO2 80 times faster than its predecessor for a total annual capacity of 4,000 tons. While this is a truly commendable feat, the US has emitted that much CO2 since the start of my talk. So there's a long road ahead to net zero, climate, uh, net zero carbon emissions. Recent reports by professional agencies like the National Academies and IPCC have demonstrated that we need to hit gigaton scale, that is billions of tons of CO2 removal by mid-century. Here in the Clean Energy Conversions Lab at Penn, we're, wake, we're working to make that happen. Now to put this challenge in per, into perspective, if we were to build a facility like the one I mentioned earlier, every single day, it would take on the order of 1,000 years to get to gigaton scale and we only have 30. Therefore, it is essential that we accelerate carbon, remo carbon removal approaches. So how do we do it? First, we must urge policymakers to prioritize economic incentives for carbon removal. In the US, there are credits for capturing carbon, which have been gradually increasing over time, and that's great. But it would be better if the credits started higher to encourage deployment now and then declined over time as costs come down through learning and economies of scale. Second, we need a portfolio of approaches, including direct air capture of CO2 through air, but also through forests, soils, oceans, and other pathways. Not only does this decrease the burden on each approach, but it also maximizes their unique co-benefits that extend beyond carbon management. When the pandemic emerged, no vaccines for any strain of coronavirus had ever been produced. Two years later, six billion doses have been administered. Our species is not new to crises that seem impossible to solve. If we follow the science and leverage public resources, we can make the impossible possible. 